It is finally time for the last NBA injury report video of the year. Guys, thank you very much for watching, supporting it, because it was ended up being something that was a valuable piece of content that we kept doing just because you guys were consistently liking the video, watching, subscribing to the YouTube channel, all of that. So thank you very much for watching and something that's going to be back next year in all likelihood because of the support it got. Also, shout out to Prize Picks who is sponsoring the show. If you're signing up for prize picks for the first time, use the promo code Osmo. Get up to $100 bonus on your first deposit and get yourself one free month of Osmo Plus Platinum. Now, Adam, it's the last one of the year, and there's been a lot of injuries, but it's kind of sketchy for today because not that many guys are ruled out. Right now, I'm kind of looking at it as I guess there are teams that could rest people, but it's nothing confirmed or just kind of speculating. So I want to ask you, which teams do you think could end up sitting people or just people should keep an eye out for? Yeah, I think the ones that really stand out there are Milwaukee, you know, first game of the night, so not a huge issue as far as being surprised later, but we haven't gotten their injury report. They played yesterday. They don't have any real incentive to run guys out there on a back-to-back. -back. Wouldn't be shocking if you see any of their starters uh, resting today. Toronto also on a back-to-back. -back. They didn't have Van Vliet or Ananobi yesterday. Now they're playing a home game against Houston where they're 12-point favorites. Wouldn't be shocking if any of their starters um, end up resting. I think those are the two that really stand out. I mean, OKC is doing whatever <laughs> OKC is doing. Um, at this point, I just assume that they're going to run their G League squad out there again uh, and that you're not going to get Pogoshevsky and those guys. But kind of the way that Josh and I talked about it this morning, if you get OKC starting lineup and Pokashevsky and those guys are in it, then obviously they're playing. If they're not in it, it seems pretty safe to assume they are not playing. So it's easy enough to you know handle that one. Yeah, and it, just my guess on what happens here, and we're going to get more information later. I'm just kind of guessing, I guess, for the sake of fun right now. But I think the Raptors will probably play Fred Van Vliet today and then rest Pascal Siakam, just kind of do the inverse of what they did. And then we've also got other weird stuff, like the Blazers have listed Josh Hart and Justice Winslow questionable. I would be stunned if they end up playing. So yeah, I guess we're certainly no big... DFS impacts there anyway, because yeah. I think Portland's gotten to a point where assuming they don't start ruling guys out, none of them look that good anyway. So then if you're just adding Winslow and Hart to the mix, it just makes everything look even worse. Well, the good news is at least we do have some talking points because there are teams that have already ruled players out for tanking slash rest purposes at the end of the year, starting with the Wizards. Kyle Kuzma, he hasn't played for a little while, but now in addition, Kristaps Porzingis is out today. For whatever reason, they decided now is the time to rest. And they've been playing him in back-to-backs coming back from a knee injury. But Porzingis and KCP both going to be out. What does this open up for Washington? It should open up a lot of Daniel Gafford at center. Um, he's $3,900. He's been backing up Porzingis. Played a little bit alongside him recently, but mostly just has been the backup. So I expect he'll start. It should get Thomas Bryant into the rotation at 3K. Wouldn't play those two guys together, but you certainly could see, you know, the game play out where Bryant has a better game than Gafford. I'm sure he'll be lower owned since he's coming off the bench. Uh, you should see increased usage, increased scoring opportunities for guys like Rui Achimura at 5,300. Denny Avdi at 5,400. Um, Ish Smith's been over a fantasy point per minute guy with the Wizards all season. He's likely to continue producing as well. Um, but I think Rui and Denny are likely to take on a bigger scoring load. All right. And the next piece of news we have to talk about here, Alex Caruso is questionably sat out last game. And there are some extra minutes to go around in the backcourt. Even if Alex Caruso himself isn't a high usage player, this is a positive matchup for the Bulls against Charlotte. And Caruso has started for big portions of the season. So guys like Kobe White, I would assume it would be in line for extra minutes. But who would be the best value options if Caruso doesn't play? Yeah, so we didn't really get to see. I mean, uh, yeah, we didn't really get to see a closing lineup from Chicago last game. Uh, the Sunmu and Patrick Williams were out there, but there was no Levine, no Vooch, no DeRozan. So don't know for sure, you know, who would close. But if Caruso is out, it is safe to say that all of Williams, White, and the Sunmu look better. All four guys or all three guys are sub 4K on DraftKings. I think that, you know, the two that end up in the closing lineup probably varies by, you know, how they're playing. But I would expect that you get Patrick Williams in the starting lineup if uh, if Caruso is out. He's likely to give you around 30 minutes at 3,700. Kobe White probably approaches 28 to 30 minutes off the bench at 3,900. Uh, certainly gives you a nice ceiling in a good spot as well. And then the Sunmu, you know, not a high usage guy one way or the other. But if he does have a path to 28 to 30 minutes instead of 24 to 26 at 3,800, that's not horrible either. All right, now let's close this out by talking about the Lakers, the final team we have to talk about this year. Unfortunately, I wish we were talking about Jimmy Butler. I would have loved to have closed with that. I think that would have been the perfect way to bookend this. But 
It's going to have to be the Lakers we close with, and they are going to be a massive piece of injury news for tonight. LeBron James done for the season, which means he will not be winning the scoring title, did not play enough games to qualify. In addition to Anthony Davis, Russell Westbrook not playing tonight, appears they are not going to be playing for the rest of the season either. Uh, With that in mind, who are we looking to target from the Lakers? We saw the same situation last night. So the caveat here is that the lineup could certainly end up being different than it was last night. But, um, I mean, I think you're starting with Halen Horton Tucker. Uh, He started, he played 37 minutes. He's a good point per minute guy. So at 3,800, he doesn't even need anywhere close to 37 minutes to be one of the best values on the slate. If he does get there, then he looks great. Uh, Malik Monk's salary somehow came down on DraftKings by $400. He played a ton of minutes last night. You know you're going to get a lot of usage there. Um, Austin Reeves played north of 30 minutes, as did Stanley Johnson. Either one of those guys look like good values just because they're cheap. They're around 0.75 to 0.8 fantasy points per minute on average. Average without LeBron uh, Davis or Westbrook on the floor. They have a good matchup against OKC. So even though they're not the same level of fantasy producer as Horton Tucker or Monk, they do still look good. One spot that I'm interested in is that uh, Dwight Howard started yesterday. Carmelo Anthony was out with an illness. Howard ended up playing 26 minutes. It wouldn't be surprising at all if Howard sits today and maybe you get more minutes for Wenyan Gabriel. Uh, so he's somebody to keep an eye on just because he is a good he, Gabriel's around a fantasy point per minute guy. He only played 20 minutes yesterday, but he's only $3,600. So if you were to get a situation where, you know, Dwight Howard is out, Gabriel would look fantastic. And then even, you know, if Howard is in, you can at least throw some darts at Gabriel if you're playing a lot of tournament lineups. And that is going to do it for us. Keep an eye on the injury report, guys. Like this video, subscribe to the YouTube channel. Check out the deeper dive. Check out Live Before Lock. I assume a lot of things are going to change from now until later in the day. Of course, if you have any questions, comments at all, leave them below in the comments section. I'll be answering those. Other than that, good luck. Thank you very much for supporting our content.